Hello, I am Congressman Doug Lamborn from the United States. It is an honor to address you today at the third annual Kiev Jewish Forum. Although I cannot join you in person, it is good to be with you in spirit, especially on the 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Israel and Ukraine. It is wonderful that so many senior government officials from Israel are able to participate in this event, and especially so many senior leaders from the government of Ukraine. Everyone participating in the conference knows that this part of the world, while bountiful and beautiful, has historically seen more than its share of conflict. Located at the crossroads of empires and great powers throughout modern history, Ukrainians are justifiably protective of their independence. Having escaped the totalitarian jackboot of Soviet tyranny at the end of the 20th century, our dear Ukrainian friends are haunted once again by the specter of Moscow's deadly intentions. Our thoughts and our prayers are with the people of Ukraine as tensions escalate on their border. I hope that my country provides you as much lethal military assistance as you need, with the ideal goal of deterring any conflict from even happening. Ukrainians are a courageous people, and I will do everything I can to ensure that you have the tools you need to maintain the sovereignty you were promised under the Budapest Memorandum on Security Assurances. Like their neighbors, the Ukrainian Jewish population are a resilient people. For over a thousand years, since Constantine VII sat on the imperial throne in Constantinople, Jewish men and women have called Kiev home. Their industry and intelligence, familial fidelity, and unassailable faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob ensured those men and women of the diaspora who settled in the area were able to carve out a happy existence in the cities and towns across the Ukrainian steppe. In many cases, they flourished, but the Jewish population of Ukraine was not immune to the turmoil which engulfed the region in the Middle Ages, and unfortunately, a great deal of the violence and horror targeted them specifically. After recovering from the Mongolian occupation, and flourishing under the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the Jewish population would be targeted and devastated by the Himmelnitsky uprising and suffer along with the rest of the citizens of the Commonwealth under the deluge. In the 19th century, as the Ukrainian Jewish community again recovered and spread, the modern pogroms began. Localized at first with blood libels and mob violence, then state-run purges, culminated in the worst horrors of the 20th century. But today, by the grace of God and the indomitable spirit and bravery of their people, the Jewish community of Ukraine remains alive and well. The history of Ukraine's Jewish population puts into stark relief the extreme dangers of anti-Semitism. Villainizing people based on who they are is the prerequisite for ethnic violence. The shocking evils we witnessed in the early and mid-20th century directed at Ukrainian Jews, underscores the importance of never again. But never again can't be an empty and toothless slogan we recite at memorials. If we are serious about this statement, we must support the inalienable rights of Jewish communities around the world to defend themselves. Whether that means standing up for Israel and defending Israel at the UN, <clears throat> or reaffirming their right to exist and providing them the means to defend themselves, we must remain vigilant in the fight against the oldest hatred. Today, that often means defending the provision of American military aid to Israel from Democrats here in the halls of Congress, combating anti-Semitic attacks in broad daylight happening in cities across the U.S. and Europe, and fighting back against boycott, divestment, and sanctions, or BDS, movements, whose ultimate goal is to economically destroy Israel. To this end, it was my honor to introduce the Taylor Force Act, which prohibits American taxpayer dollars from going to the Palestinian Authority until they cease paying a stipend to terrorists who murder innocent Israelis. Unfortunately, it appears that the Palestinian Authority is once again in violation of this U.S. law. The Biden administration must take action. This must not stand. Similarly, it is unfortunate that we must fight right now with elements of the Democratic Party to ensure that Iron Dome, an entirely defensive system, is fully funded. 
I am pleased to say that we were able to fully fund the Iron Dome and similar Israeli missile defense systems like Arrow 3 and David Sling in the fiscal year 2022 National Defense Authorization Act, which just passed. And last year, I introduced language into the defense bill, which will let Israel and the U.S. develop anti-missile laser technology together. I hope someday soon we can say that the Iron Beam is shooting down jihadist rockets over Tel Aviv. On that note, we must pause to recognize the great strides Ukraine has made. Ukraine has become much more welcoming and safe for their Jewish population. Even electing President Zelensky, their first Jewish president, a milestone even the U.S. has not reached. I applaud President Zelensky and his government for their efforts to make their fellow citizens welcome and Ukraine's ongoing good relations with Israel. How a nation views Israel and the Jewish people says a great deal about the character of that nation. And in recent years, our Ukrainian friends are emulating the noblest traditions of their country's history. As the psalmist said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Thank you again for allowing me to address your assembly. Let us continue fighting together against anti-Semitism and oppression in all its forms. May God bless the United States, Israel, and Ukraine.